And welcome or welcome back on C Square. In this video clip, we're going to take a look to some problem related to transforming polynomial function uh, and we look to power function. <coughs> so these are the transformation we can see for any polynomial function, but here we, we look into the the parent graph uh, what I speak of y equals x cubed, right? So if we subtract a quantity, right? And the graph, the pattern graph will move down. Can you see if we add, it's going to move up. Now be careful here, we subtract inside of the parentheses, it's going to move right. If we add, it's going to move left. And these two are the same graphs. However, this one we define as reflecting over the x axis and the last one is over the y axis. But like I said, these two guys are the same. In fact, uh, the last equation can be simplified and it's going to be negative x cubed. That's the reason they are the same. These one are called rigid transformation because they don't change the shape since this one they change the shape. The first one, vertical stretch, right? So we have a number a greater than 1 in front of x cubed, like 2, 3, 10. Uh, the, the shape of x cubed, the parent graph will change. If the number is between 0 and 1, then we have what we call a vertical shrink. If the number is greater than 1 and is inside here, we call that, inside here, we call that a horizontal shrink. And if the number is between 0 and 1, and again, inside of the parentheses, horizontal stretch. <coughs> and now let's take a look to this problem. Uh, and apply what we've seen on the previous slide, write an equation of the graph y equals x cubed over vertical stretch by a factor of 6, very important, horizontal shift of 3 units, and uh, to the left, and uh, vertical shift of 7 units. So let's start with the, uh, I think, in my opinion, the easy one, the horizontal shift to the left. Okay. So to the left, that means where the negative numbers are, and it's going to be x plus 3, right? So this guy is going to move the pattern graph, x cubed 3 units to the left, and uh, then we have 7 units down, minus 7. Now, what about this uh, 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 stretch factor that goes right here? Okay, so this is the answer. Pause this video clip and try to do number 64. So if you have this sensor for the second one, then you did a wonderful job. Uh, if you notice, I do have a mistake. Uh, I did have a mistake on, on the first one. It is uh, 6 times the quantity x plus 3 cubed plus 7. Yes, yeah, 7 units up, it moves. You need to add 7. Uh, and this one, like I said, this is the answer for the second one. <laughs> and let's take a look at this type of problem where they give us the graph and they want us to determine the transformation that were used to change the graph of the parent function y equals x cubed, right? So if you remember, y equals x cubed is the one that goes like that. This point is here, 0 and 0. Okay, so from 0 and 0 here, we go to 1 and 2. Right? That should tell you what you need to write here, x. Be careful now here, minus 1. Again, you move right one unit, cube, and then you move up. Okay. Uh, now, uh, generally, I will suggest you to put an A in front and use any of these given points to find A. Uh, in this case, uh, we don't need to do that. The A will be 1. You can double check me if you answer the equation for this guy. For Number 65 is y equal 
uh, x minus 1 cubed plus 2. Okay. Uh, pause this video clip and try to do number 66. The same thing on uh, 66k would be 1. Just take a look to the transformation. If you have this pencil for uh, number 66, you did a wonderful job. Uh, let's take a look to these two questions. Uh, similar, however, uh, let's take a look here on something. As I said on the previous slide, this is y equal x cube. We already notice this is uh, going down. So that will be y equals negative x cubed is a reflection right over the x-axis. So what will be the equation for the first one? Y equals, again, I'm going to have to put a negative. Open a parenthesis. And this guy here is negative 1 and uh, uh, positive 2. So we're going to have x plus 1. Right? I'm just going to move the graph left uh, to the third power. Don't forget this. It's, this is the parent graph x cubed. And then we have plus 2 because he's moved up. Pause this video clip and try number 68. If you have this answer for number 68, then you did a wonderful job. And also, let's take a look, in fact, determine the transformation used to graph the parent function. Probably here you want to verbalize. Yeah, it was move one unit for this one, for example. It was one unit for number 67. You move one unit left, two unit up, and reflect it over the uh, x-axis. What about this one? This was move uh, number 68. Uh, was move two units right, three units up and reflect it over the x-axis. And the same for the other problem. You may want to verbalize, in fact, the transformation. 65, it was uh, one unit um, right, two unit up, and uh, no reflection. Number 66, two units left, three units down, no reflection. Okay, and let's take a look to some application of uh, power function. In this one, we have the amount of water that the spherical tank can hold uh, varies direct, directly as the cube of its radius. And in fact, maybe you even know a formula, uh, but we don't need that. If a tank will, uh, with a radius of 7.5 holds uh, 1,767 cubic foot of water, how much water can a tank uh, with a radius of 16 feet hold. So basically here, what they tell us is that the volume varies directly. So I'm going to put here an A, which you're going to find out, times the cube of its radius. Okay? This is the beginning. Okay, this is the first sentence. And in this case, uh, the first case, we have the radius is 7, the volume 1767. So we're going to have 1767 equals A times 7.5 cubed. So in this case, we need to find A. So we get 1767 equals A. Now we're going to do 7.5 cubed, which is uh, 421.875. We're going to divide by, by 421. And we're going to get A equal 
4.188 and so on. <clears throat> so now we go back and we replace that in the formula, right? It's, we're going to have 4.188, and we have a bunch of decimal here, times the radius cubed, and we're going to do the second part. In this one, we're going to we'd ask us how much water can attack over a radius of 60 feet. So we're going to need to find the volume, right? And we have the radius is 16, and we're going to raise to the third power. So... I have a volume of uh, 17,155.86. This is the volume that uh, the tank will hold. Go ahead and take a look on problem 70. If you end up with this answer for number 70, then you did a wonderful job. You see how similar is over number 60. Okay. If you enjoyed this uh, video clip, don't forget to click the like button down right and come back and see square for more math video clips. Thank you.